Eugene Humbrick with Humbrick Law here, criminal and traffic defense attorney in Massachusetts, Virginia. Um, coming to you for my weekly Wednesday Facebook Live uh, at four o'clock or a little bit after. Um, and you guys have, if you're confused, uh, the last few Facebook Lives have had nothing to do with criminal and traffic law. Um, with everything being shut down, I've been talking to small and local businesses about things that they have going on and how they're preparing for the, the changes as we're moving into the different phases. And if you're watching this video later, we're recording this on, what day is this? June 3rd, 2020. So Northern Virginia is still in phase one and have not hit phase two. Um, just to give everybody kind of a background about what we're talking about today. So today I have a very special guest, my favorite bartender, Carl Messer from Carabas, that also has, in my opinion, the best happy hour in town. So uh, Carl, if you can um, just give a brief introduction um, to everybody about what's going on at Carabas, and then I have some specific questions that we're going to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a flattering introduction. I <laughs> definitely appreciate the uh, the favorite bartender thing. Um, so yeah, we, I've been with Carabas for coming up on six years, um, and honestly, like been working throughout the the whole uh, quarantine and pandemic. Uh, and they they've done an excellent job of taking care of their employees and. Uh, you know, it's a, it, it makes it an easy company to support. So like whatever questions and stuff that we have, like I want to like answer them so more people have an understanding of what's going on, and, um, you know, what, what we're going through, what changes we're going to make to make sure that everyone's protected and, you know, um, just sort of get to back to a, a level of normalcy that like hopefully uh, everyone will be comfortable with. Okay. Well, that's really good to know. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there. Nobody really knows what's going on. Every restaurant, is, uh, every business is handling things differently. There are certain things that everybody has to do. Um, but I, I just wanted to talk to you specifically about things that Caraba is, is doing. Um, first, I wanted to ask you, um, what have you guys been doing during the shutdown that was different from normal operations? Because obviously during the shutdown, nobody could come, come in to eat. So did you guys do anything different than you had before? Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the unfortunate aspect of that is like we did have to reduce down the menu a little bit, but uh, what we did um, to sort of counteract that was uh, we expanded our delivery area. Uh, we, we had been doing deliveries well before uh, any of this uh, had started. Uh, and when that became the focus where we could only do to go and deliveries, uh, it definitely gave us an opportunity to uh, expand that, that area, um, or it, I believe, like double it. Uh, honestly. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going out, like we're based here in Centerville. Uh, we're going out to Gainesville, um, you know, Manassas, Manassas Park, uh, huh? Annandale. Annandale. Yeah. That's a, that's a journey. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Annandale, Fairfax, um, you know, so, uh, I, I think it was important to, to get people to know how far out that we were going because, uh, it, it wasn't like a normal delivery area. You, you call up your Domino's pizza hut, whatever. Um, yeah, we're, we're taking extreme care to make sure that the, the quality isn't compromised once that food gets there either. So. Yeah. And um, something that I forgot to say when we got started, anybody that's watching this, if you could um, like or love or leave the wow face for uh, for this video. And if you could also leave a quick note in the comments about where you're signing in from, because uh, we're always curious to hear that. And then, um, you know, as Carl just said, they're delivering to all sorts of different areas. So um, they might even be able to deliver to you and, and you wouldn't even know it because Annandale is not, not very close to Centerville. No, it's a, it's a, it's a hike. So, for, a couple of times, but it's, it's good. so are you the only Carabas in the area that's doing that or why, why are you going so far? Um, no, um, but the, Carabas typically aren't necessarily close together. Um, we, we have a, another location in Reston and another one in, uh, I, I consider it to be Woodbridge. Uh, I think the, the actual uh, name of the location is Dale City. Dale City. Um, so, um, you know, they, they're not particularly close together. So that that's kind of why those delivery areas were able to be expanded so far. Um, okay. So, you know, those three stores all expanded it. Uh, it makes actually giant footprint uh, and where you could be and still get Carabas. So. Okay. And how do people order for delivery? Is it online? Can they call in? Yeah. So I, I did one of those, um, the, the online, um, you know, so 
some people call in and have issues with it. Uh, I, I've never experienced that uh, myself. Um, I, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, you order, you select a time for, for when you want the order. Uh, I know a couple people had to call in to, to make specific changes to, to their order, but that's, you know, few and far between. Uh, but we're definitely here to take calls as well. Um, and we, we have a, an incredible team uh, that's worked throughout this whole pandemic. And it, it was honestly interesting to see how we were able to grow the business uh, in a time where not a lot of like business was growing. So we didn't just have a, a format where, you know, the, the people that were working were able to come in and make money, but the business was profitable as well. And that was, that was really important. So. All right. That's good. Um, so the delivery and, and you said they, there's also to go, right? People can come in and pick yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah. That's a, uh, Honestly, that, that's probably the more common one. Um, you know, people maybe on their way home from wherever they were coming back from or whatever it is, uh, mm -hmm. you give us a call, we have it ready in, you know, 15, 20 minutes and okay. uh, right out to your car. Um, and like I said, we're, we're taking a lot of precautions here and that, that's also a big, uh, big part of the plan for phase two and like when we open back up. And, uh, phase one is a good little trial run for that, but uh, the, the execution in phase two going to be absolutely flawless so okay well you actually brought up a couple things i wanted to talk about so for for phase one the restaurants cannot be open for inside dining correct only patty that, yeah. that, okay. that's correct um we we normally i mean prior to to this i'm coming up on six years here we've never really done outside seating uh, we have some tables set up outside right now and for the most part uh it's gone off about a hitch um hey, it's still table service uh it, there's some things that like take some getting used to, um, you know, on, on our end. Um, but you know, just having the option of going to a restaurant right now, I think is huge. Um, so, you know, you come, we, we're still offering that incredible happy hour that you talked about, um, it, minus a couple of appetizers, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, that it, it's something that is new to us, but we still want to deliver an experience that isn't compromised to, to the customer. So, um, you know, hopefully phase one won't last too long and then we can get get on with phase two and uh, get some things going in, in the restaurant that uh, will we'll help everyone out. And like, it, it, it'll be a visible difference. You'll be able to see it. Um, so, it, you know, that we're, we're excited about getting started with that. Yeah. So you mentioned that customers are gonna see different things and you're taking a lot of precautions to make sure everybody is safe. Can you tell people what they can expect right now during phase one if you know if they go to Carabas, you know, in terms of masks yeah. and the then social distancing and rules? So absolutely. Um obviously being outside, uh you wouldn't be required to to wear a mask as a customer, but uh for those of us that are serving, um we will be wearing masks, we will be wearing gloves. Those gloves get changed basically every interaction that you have. So um, you, you take food to a table, you take a drink to the table, gloves change. Uh, every time we change our gloves, uh, we're washing our hands. Um, we have a timer set for every 30 minutes where we're washing our hands, uh, changing like changing out the gloves, making sure everything is good. Um, and a mask has to be worn at all times. Uh, I'm kind of getting away with one because I'm in the back of the restaurant off by myself right now. But, um, you know, that that's what they're going to see and uh you know i had uh someone over the weekend uh tell me it was, it was kind of weird uh interacting with a server when my mask is on and you can't really see the you know facial expressions and, and whatnot but that's just going to be one of those things that uh you know if it is weird uh it's just going to take some getting used to because that's that's what the expectation is going to be and uh we, we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that expectation is met and that people know that they're uh, not just coming in for a good time, but uh, they're, they're also in good hands and we're going to take care of them. Yeah, well, that's good to know because a lot of people um, are still concerned about safety. I mean, everybody wants to go out and, uh, and support their, their favorite bars and restaurants and other businesses. But, you know, they, they do want to make sure that things are being handled you know, the right way. And every, uh, every, every business and establishment is different. So I think it's very helpful that you're telling people that and what they can expect so that you know they're not uh they're not concerned or at least as concerned they know that precautions are being taken and they know what and i think a lot of concern comes with uncertainty so now knowing you know what you guys are doing i think is very helpful to people yeah uh you know i i think uh you know some some restaurants it's uh 
probably a little easier to to execute those kinds of things. So we put a lot of care into what we do. We we're we're still doing our our scratch kitchen where we're making these incredible recipes from scratch uh, in, in the back. Um, and to to be able to do that and execute uh, the, the family promises, the the sautéed pasta, the the handmade soups. Um, to, to be able to execute that while still uh, taking these extra precautions, making sure that no one's compromised or at risk when they come into Carabas, uh, it, it's certainly a, a tall task, but I think it's one that we're definitely uh, up to. And uh, to, to this point, uh, we've done an incredible job. I'm, I'm really proud of the team. So, Okay, uh, that's good to hear. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the social distancing for the patio seating? Um, cause if, if you guys, uh, if, if you're just tuning in right now, Carabas did not have patio seating before, but like a lot of restaurants, a lot of restaurants are, um, expanding outside if they have the space to do that. So, um, I guess my questions would be, you know, how many people can you seat? Are you limiting the number of people? Are you putting space between tables? What, what exactly are you guys doing? So basically all of that, um, <laughs> so the, the number of uh, tables that we, we currently have the space for isn't very high. Um. Uh, we're, we're definitely keeping those six feet apart um, and only uh, right now only able to accommodate a, a group of four out on, on the patio. So yeah. we have six four tops. Yeah, we have six four tops. So, okay. uh, you know, six tables out that can accommodate four people. Uh, can't be pushed together. Can't, can't, can't do that. Uh, it has to adhere to the social distancing. Um, and they, they are all more than six feet apart. Um, so, you know, it, it's enough that like you're in earshot, uh, if you come with a, a group of more than four, um, you, you could potentially split that up to, to two tables where you're in earshot, but, uh, only four at a table, uh, right now. Um, and then I guess, uh, you know, over the, the weekend, I think, uh, Saturday we're setting up the tent. Um, so we're going to be able to have some more seating outside, um, you know, get, uh, I think it's like a 30 foot tent. It's 10 by 30. Okay. Um, and we'll have string lights and music out there, and it'll be able to seat ten more tables. Out okay. There. So yeah, but I mean, even that alone, uh, if we have ten more four tops, that increases what we can do by forty. Um, and right now, I think it's at twenty-four. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that that's a that's going to be able to accommodate a, a fairly sizable crowd, especially with the fact that all restaurants have mainly been empty for the last two and a half months. So. Yeah. So when did you guys start the patio service? Was it uh, last Monday? That, last friday, friday. So last, yeah last friday um and that was uh that was a weird thing in itself um you know uh the i guess the decision to to move forward with phase one came in like very late um we uh we had to kind of come up with a game plan and execute it within like 24 hours uh, essentially um but i'm really happy with the outcome um uh, you know it, it, it there's nothing about the, the situation that's ideal right now Mm -hmm. um, but the the fact that we were able to to get a plan in place and execute it uh, pretty flawlessly was was excellent. So yeah, I was happy with that. well, that's good. I'm glad we're talking about this because uh, otherwise I, I wouldn't have known. And things are changing so quickly, so it's hard for anybody to know what's going on with all the different businesses. Every anytime yeah. we think about going anywhere, we have to look online and you know wondering if things are updated. Is your website updated with this information? It doesn't have the patio seating yeah. available. But okay. Everything else is updated. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, menu and things like that have definitely been updated. So. Okay. Um, what else did I want to ask? Um, you, you actually answered a lot of questions that I had. Um, well, that, that's good. That's what I'm here for. I'm, <laughs> if uh, I have the answer, I'll, I'll get it to you. Oh, I did have a question about the patio seating. Um, do people need to call ahead? Is it reservation only or first come, first serve? So it's definitely first come, first serve. Um, right now, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a big problem. I, I actually think a lot of people are actually holding out and waiting until phase two to, mm -hmm. uh, to pop out and do the restaurant thing. Um, you know, in couple of that with the, the issue that like people don't know that we did patio seating. So um, mm -hmm. maybe having the assumption that it's not happening uh, is like making it so that our patio isn't really packed. Um, but I'm actually looking out the window right now and people are coming up to, uh, to sit outside is, is what it appears to be. Um, but, um, you know, uh, I think the more people that know that it's out there, I, I think the more people are going to come, um, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. we'll just have to like get that and grow that the same way that we did when 
we were only doing to go and delivery and people didn't realize that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and now that's become, you know, clockwork for us. So. Okay. And um, I know a, a lot of different restaurants have different delivery and pickup procedures. Um, can they, can people go online or call and get the food delivered immediately? And the and, and, and meaning like 30, 40 minutes. And the reason I ask that is because some restaurants require you to place an order a day or several days in advance. Can, can oh, I no. just call up an order? Uh, yeah, you, you call in an order, uh, go online, order. We'll get it to you as quickly as possible. Um, but I mean that day, you know, you don't have to do it. Several oh, yeah. Days. Okay. Yeah, that, definitely. That, like that day, I mean, that, that hour is uh, probably... Okay you know, fine. Uh, I, I think tempering expectation where it's going to be like a 30 minute delivery, uh, probably not. We're cooking the food by hand. Um, you know, we're, we're taking the care to, to make sure that it's done right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whereas you can get delivery from some other places where your order is ready within like five minutes, probably takes us about 15 minutes to get the food done right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whatever, whatever your expectation for delivery time is, you know, mm -hmm. expand that by 10, 15 minutes. And yeah. that's probably where uh, we're more uh, accurate there. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, and I guess if you could tell everybody a little bit about Carabas in general, if they have never been there before, um, you know, what's the, what's any, any particular specials you have going on right now beyond that, just, just what you guys are known for. And, um, I already mentioned the happy hour, but whatever, whatever you want, everybody. Well, so I know uh, we got Father's Day coming up and we're running some specials for that. Um, the uh, short rib marsala, uh, the, the rigatoni martino, and uh, what was the other one? Oh, we'll just do the family bundle, rigatoni martino, I mean, not martino, uh, campanello. Oh, campanello. He's coming back. Okay. The, or so, alforno, sorry. Rigatoni alforno. Oh, you're, that see, was my bad. It's messing me up here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the rigatoni alforno um, is, is coming back. That's with the, the peppers and the it's uh oven roasted with cheese on top yeah okay um cream sauce. but the, the short rib marsala i mean every time that's on our menu i have to order it at least like three four times it's absolutely delicious uh it's always comes out cooked to perfection uh, it's that's it's gonna be really good uh so we got that coming up for father's day um and in, just in general i mean i think uh when, when i think about how long i've been at carabas uh, you know it's uh Part of the reason I've stayed so long is I'm proud of the products that we serve. Um, I, I think the fact that we're doing everything the right way, we're doing it by hand. Um, like when I walk in in the morning and I'm smelling what they're cooking in the back, it's uh, like even if I was just eating it, it, it makes me hungry. Um, but you know that that quality, uh, knowing that I'm I'm what I'm giving to people is a, a quality product, and it's not something that we pulled out of a freezer bag and like tossed in the microwave, right? Um, it's uh, it's that that's kept me around. Like I want to like food is one of the most endearing things to people, right? Like we all have to eat and I, I think we do it better than anyone else. Um, so, you know, being able to take pride in what you're doing and what you're serving to people uh, makes a big difference. And it's that, that family environment where it's like, if you don't want to serve it to your family, why are you serving it at all? So, um, I mean, Gene, you, you come to my bar, you, you know how I interact with, with my people and, you know, it's uh, it is a family atmosphere. I, I, I love all my bar regulars, and uh, I honestly can't wait to have them back in the building. Um, we'll get there, but uh, the, the important thing to know is that like none of that's going to change. You know, we're we're still doing everything uh, at, at a high quality, and uh, we're we're hoping to pass that on. And, like people understand that like we're we're not compromising anything that we we did in the past to to you know uh, average out whatever time expectation is going to have to be met with the the new procedures uh everything's still going to be done at high quality and that's going to be the expectation okay well that's awesome it's good to hear and it's good to hear that you guys are still you know operating and, and doing well and that the patio is available for people but that's actually yeah. a good segue um i know we went a little bit longer than i said we were going to go because carl is technically working right now and has to go soon <laughs> because there's customers on the patio um but i just was wondering oh, if no, we, we have a we have a server <laughs> We're good. We're good. But. Uh, I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, plans for phase two. And I know it's hard to say right now because Northern, and if I haven't mentioned to people watching, we're in Northern Virginia and um, the crop is at Carl's at is in Northern Virginia. So we are in phase one. So um, do you guys, and you, there are probably Carabas in other parts of Virginia that are already into phase two. So we don't have to talk about that, but I'm just curious if you guys have plans for phase two 
you know, what customers can expect. And I think this might be very important actually because if customers want to come out now, you know, they and, and they want to know what phase two is going to look like. So to the extent, you know, you can have plans, like is there anything in, in place or at least tentative? Yeah, so uh, we, we do have the plan in place, and it, a lot of it is uh, some things that we already touched on, but uh, I know one thing that we didn't. Um, so it, it's looking like we're going to be like 50% capacity, uh, and the way that we're accomplishing that is basically shutting down every other table. Um, and so, like, you'll have a, a table's worth of space in between, like, you and uh, whoever else is uh, eating next to you. Um, there, there's still some questions that we, we have to clarify with uh, Phase 2. Uh, because I know right now, if you're inside a building uh, anywhere in Virginia, you're required to have a mask on. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we can't have you have a mask on while you're eating. Uh, so there, there's going to be some uh, clarification that has to be done on that. Um, but the, the big one is going to be, you know, 50 percent capacity, uh, mm -hmm. half of the bar chairs being taken out, uh, you know, half of the, the high top tables being taken out. Um, it, it, it's going to look a little bit different. Even if we're at capacity, it's going to probably feel like a slow night to, to everyone else. But I, I, I really want people to, um, even if it's not here, and you know, Hannah walked away for a second, but um, <laughs> it, even if it's not here, the, the expectation uh, should, should be tempered until every everyone figures out, you know, kind of how we're doing this and like how like what what amount of time extra it's going to take to make sure that we're serving people safely mm -hmm. um like it's not going to be the same exact experience as, as before we're just taking those steps to try to make it as close to that while also keeping everyone safe and you know it's, it's going to be a little bit different um initially uh mm -hmm. hopefully that becomes normal very quickly and I, I i think it will based on how we're going about trying to handle the situation okay okay all right well that's good um i didn't discuss this question with you before people might be wondering if you have any idea when we're going to be entering phase two. So unfortunately we don't. Um, okay. it, was, it was very similar to phase one where um, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to find out very last minute. That's okay. why we have a plan in place already uh, okay. because of the way that phase one was handled where, you know, at the start of the week, they're like, yeah, we're going to push back phase one. And then it was like, oh, you can start phase one tomorrow. And, you know, you just kind of have to hope that you have a plan. So we, we do have a plan ready in to go in place for phase two. Um, as we get closer to it, uh, it'll be interesting to see if any changes are, are going to be made to what uh, the state's expectations are for, for phase two. I know the plan that we're going to be executing uh, already kind of complies with everything that uh, they, they want us to do. Um, so if any changes need to be made, uh, those are going to be easy ones. But uh, as of right now, you know, it, phase two could be starting on Friday. Uh, it could be pa pushed back a, a lot farther than that. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and I know a lot depends on, you know, what what the governor does and the rules throughout the state. And then since different parts, I mean, there's so much always in flux in different parts of the state open before Northern Virginia, so maybe they learned things that worked or that didn't work that you know might uh, might change things so um i guess we just have to all all wait and see and um what what is the best way for people to find out you know the updates for phase two or if anything is changing is there a facebook page they can go to or the website um i don't know that we do anything at the store level for like okay. facebook okay like that but honest to God, if anyone has any questions, you can call in and talk to one of us. Uh, we're, we're certainly open to that because hey, that could change someone's outlook. They might not know anything that's going on. They can call in, ask some questions, and maybe end up having dinner that night. You know, um, mm -hmm. they, they, they might not know that we're even open for that. So if they have any questions, you know, just give us a call. That, that's the easiest way to do it. Oh, Terry just joined us. She said, love and miss you, Carl. <laughs> Well, I, I'm, I miss everyone. I, I can't wait to, to have everyone back in the building. Um, yeah. and, and like, I mean, that's a, it's a good group, you know, and like T Terry's been my regular for, God, that's like four and a half, five years, something to that effect. So uh, it's, a, it's good to actually hear from her. Um, I, I've been able to keep in touch with a few people, but not everyone has been able to, to get a hold of me. And I, obviously, you know, um, I'm always open for like text messages and you know, I try to respond to everybody. I don't always get to everyone, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's good to hear from you, Terry. I'm I'm glad you you hopped on the the call there. 
Well, Terry, if you missed earlier, go back and watch it because you can go to Carabas. You can sit on the patio. Absolutely. Oh, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Carl, um, if anybody's just joining us, we were talking about um, what Carabas has available right now in phase one, which is patio seating. And this is the Carabas in Centerville. Um, and then we were talking about, uh, you know, when phase two hits, but, you know, nothing is set in stone with that. But right now, people can go to Carabas and sit on the patio. Um, it's limited seating and it's first come for sure. But if you guys have questions, Carl, when we're done, I'm going to ask if you put the phone number in the comments so people can call. Um, yes. But I, I did want to ask you something, and I'm not sure if we touched on it. Um, all these policies and procedures and patio, everything that we were talking about, is that just Carabas in Centerville, or is every Carabas doing that? No, that that's a uh, company-wide thing. Um, we they, they put out a uh, an entire course for us all to take, and it was basically you know learn learning how to wash your hands, right? Um, but you know it's uh, it, it was a lot more than that. It was making sure you know we're, we're taking these precautions, not not just to keep people safe, but also the, the emotional side of it. You know, we don't know what people have gone through during this quarantine. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we don't want to make people feel uncomfortable coming in here uh, because, you know, you know, may, maybe something did happen to them in the, the quarantine that it's taken a lot for them to, to come back out and come to the restaurant. We want them to know that, uh, that that's important to us too. And, um, you know, we, we don't want to lose any, uh, uh, you know, customers or, you know, people coming in, uh, because they they don't think it's a safe place to be. We want to make sure that people understand that it is very safe at this point. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, not that it wasn't before, but uh, it yeah. definitely is now. And we've all done training on it, and we're all up to speed on what the expectation is, and uh, we're going to execute that. Okay. All right. Well, that's awesome, uh, Carl. Before we go, is there anything else that you want to tell everybody watching um, about what's going on right now, or just about Carabas in general? Um, oh. so, you know, we're making sure that we're always there for the community. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely didn't even touch on that. Um, and it's, it's a huge part of what we've been doing. So, um, you know, we, we have, uh, like community donations that we're doing where, um, uh, people can, uh, what is it through PayPal? Well, How's we're accepting up? donations for catering sponsored, sponsored catering, um, Sponsored catering, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, so they can donate towards catering events for hospitals and frontline workers. Yeah. Um, next week, we actually have a small business that is donating part of their proceeds. I think it's $2 from every $20 purchase or something like that. Um, they're donating it towards a catering donation for police stations. Mm -hmm. um, we've done hospitals and police stations and uh, local clinics, um, just feeding the people who are out there working the hardest yeah. for us. Yeah, that was that was actually a really cool project, and uh, you know, being able to uh, take meals to these frontline workers that have been uh, working overtime and uh, doing everything that they can to to protect our community, and that that goes back into what I was talking about, like feeding people is uh, amazing. You know, like there, there's a reason we have dinner parties, right? Um, it, it makes us feel good to to feed our family and friends, and like reaching out to those members of the community that have been there to protect us, and uh, you know, make sure um, they're doing everything. That, they can to, to keep everyone happy and healthy. Uh, that was really cool. And to, to see the, the outpouring of support with that and see all the donations flying in um, where we, we thought it was going to take a while to, to get one of these things. And I think like overnight we, we were able to uh, sponsor one. And, you know, it was, it was just really cool to, uh, to be a part of that. Uh, I didn't even know about that. Do you guys still have that going on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's just put my email yeah. on in the comments, put my email and if anybody okay. has questions, they can email me and I can send them information. Okay. Yeah. So Hannah's email is going to go in the email uh, or in the uh, comments section there and uh, along with our store number. Um, and that's another thing. If, if you got any questions, I certainly call you and talk to uh, Hannah. Hannah is probably the best person to talk to on that because uh, she, she has all the details. Um, I, I'm familiar with it enough, but uh, she, she's definitely execution there. Um, so, and again, that was just a really cool thing that we were able to do. And um, I'm, I'm glad that we're going to be continuing to do that for foreseeable future, I would say. So um, I, I missed a little bit uh, of what Hannah was saying. So how can people donate to, to get meals to the frontline workers? They can just send me an email and I can send all the information. Yeah. Um, there's kind of legal issues with putting it out there. Yeah. Okay. Fall back on it. 
but if they um, if they email me, I can certainly send all information. Um, I document the whole process, send pictures of the people receiving the food, um, pictures of the food, um, people delivering it, and everything, um, and and write a handwritten note of thanks um, with the names of the donors on there. And um, and yeah, it's it's actually a really um, enriching experience for the people donating as well as the people receiving. So. Okay. All right. Well, so if you guys are, are just joining us, uh, it's, it's, there there are ways that uh, you can help get meals to first responders, um, and there will be um, Hannah, who is the manager there. Uh, her email is going to be in the comments. So if you guys are watching this now or watching the replay later, if you want to help with that to get meals to frontline workers, you just email her and she'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, I think it's awesome that you guys are doing that. So, um, and then anything else um, in terms of promotions that you guys want people to know about, feel free to feel free to keep. Uh, yeah, so Hannah's telling me uh, free delivery uh, right now. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, I guess, I, I don't know how long that's been going on because I don't pay nearly enough attention, I think. Um, but, you know, that, that was, a, you know, one of those decisions where it's like, yeah, we, you know, uh, delivery became a very big part of our business. Um, and we did expand it, um, but we want to make sure people are getting food, man. Uh, that's uh, that's what it is. Um, we want to make sure we're taking care of people, and that played a role in that. So, okay, so free delivery. Do they yeah. order directly from Caraba, or can they get it through DoorDash and companies like that? So the the third party deliveries, uh, if it, it, whatever their delivery fee is, and and that we we don't have any control over that. Um, so, but, you know, but that, I mean, can they, can they order from Carabas through those third party? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uber Eats, DoorDash and uh, Grubhub, I believe okay. uh, we, we all, uh, have, but they, they can definitely do that. Uh, my personal recommendation is just order it right through the restaurant. Um, not, not to, you know, uh, sh shy away from, from that, but, um, it's just, that that's the most direct way to do it. Okay. So to sum up, and Carl, let me know, or Hannah, if I leave anything out, out, Carabas is doing go orders right now, but they've always been doing that. They are doing delivery and expanding their delivery reach. Delivery is free right now. They have Father's Day specials coming up. They're adding something, bringing something old back to the menu. They currently right now have patio seating, uh, which is limited to first come, first serve. Um, if you have any questions, oh, well, they are, uh, they're working on this um, donation project to get meals to first responders. Carrie said she's going right now. Uh, uh, um, they are uh, working on this donation project, which is awesome, getting meals to first responders. And if you want information on how to help with that, email Hannah, whose information is going to be in the comments. I am surprised I remember all that. that right now. I am too. I didn't remember all that. I didn't remember it. So I'm, I'm really surprised you. you did that flawlessly. Um, and uh, and then if you guys have any specific questions, and as we all know, things are constantly uh, changing, you know, by by the hour sometimes. So you guys can always call Carabas or you know reach out to Hannah or well, I don't want to say Carl because Carl will get hundreds. Of <laughs> Carl too. Um, just call yeah. Carabas and ask them. And probably any restaurant. I, I mean, every restaurant has um, you know different rules and policies and there are basic things that everybody has to abide by. But um, in, in terms of the specifics, the restaurant is different. So if you have any questions about Carabas or any other place, you know, just, just call them and ask um, because like Carl said, a lot of people don't know. And, um, you know, as things are changing, this video is not going to go anywhere. So if you're just, if you're just hearing this now, um, we're, we're in phase, this is June 3rd that we're recording this and we're talking about Carabas in phase one and what they have going on. Um, and their tentative plans for phase two. But um, anybody can always add to the comments. If you guys have any questions, if you guys want to make, you can write a comment in there. Or uh, Hannah and Carl, if you want to update anything, like you can put it in the comments here because maybe people watching that will hear you know, might be interested. So um, you guys can come back to the studio or check out the site or uh, or just call and the number will be in the comments. So I think that was a very long sentence, but um, with that being said, Carl or Hannah, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, I, I think we, we touched on everything that, uh, you know, we wanted to, to touch on over here. And hopefully people are a little bit more informed about what we're doing and how we're keeping people safe right now. 
Yeah, and I think this was um, a really good idea, honestly, not just because it's my Facebook Live, but um, I, I learned so much about this, and um, and I think a lot of businesses should be doing more of this because people just don't know because things are not operating um, as usual. So thank you, Carl, so much for taking the time, and thank you, Hannah, if you're still there, for letting Carl take the time to do this. Well, and, and thanks for, for putting this together. This is actually, uh, I, I really enjoyed this. This is fantastic. Yeah, well, maybe we can do this again, you know, in phase two or whatever when when things change. So, yeah, I'd be a hundred percent on board with that. Okay, all right, awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, Carl. Uh, Carl is joining us from Carabas in Centerville, um, and um, I will see everybody next week. Bye. All right. Bye, Jean.